Hello everybody. Today on Zero Calvin, I'd like to share with you the story of this goblet. This goblet is actually pretty special to me, and not just because it's shiny, although both my cat and I are drawn to shiny things. In order to understand why this means so much to me, we have to go back approximately 32 years. I say approximately because I can't quite remember which grade I was in at the time, but I think it was seventh grade at the latest. So that puts us in 1987 with Walk Like an Egyptian at the top of the Hot 100 billboard. And personal computers just starting to gain traction. Probably the most common PC at the time was the Commodore 64, but the Apple Macintosh had been out for a few years and despite the high price, was starting to show up in a few homes here and there. In fact, this is the very same one that my family owned at the time. And it works just as well today as any modern Apple product. Kidding aside, my point is that this was an era of monochrome monitors and graphical user interfaces just started to become a thing. And in this world of 1987 lived my 12-year-old self, who was fortunate enough to have been taken on a class trip to either a college or some sort of architectural firm. I'm a bit gray on the details. My memory says it was an architectural firm of some sort, but I remember the room that we're in was set up more like a classroom for teaching computers, so I'm not quite sure. At any rate, they were going to teach us about CAD, computer-aided drafting. So they sat each of us, maybe 10 kids or so, down in front of some really powerful computers. I don't remember exactly what they were, but I remember the feeling of awe and privilege of being able to play with one. The computers already had the CAD program running, which had a graphical element to it, but was largely controlled by text commands. I'm pretty sure the computers did have mice, though. At any rate, they began to teach us the basics of the program and gave us a simple task. We were to design a goblet or wine glass. The way they had us do this was to make a series of points on the screen to the right of a vertical line. The computer would then connect those points together and then revolve the resulting line about the vertical line to make the final shape. To make calculations easy for the computer, we limited the resolution of the revolve function to six positions instead of a seamless circle which would have taken way too long to compute. So I did mine and everybody was impressed with it, so much so that the teachers actually gave me a printout of it to take home. A printout which I actually still have to this very day. So this is my very first CAD design that I did when I was 12 years old. I rediscovered it maybe a year ago and ever since then I've had it in my head that I wanted to recreate it in a modern CAD program and then 3D print it uh, with one of the many 3D printers that I have in my own home, which is something that would have blown the mind of my 12-year-old self. I used Fusion 360 to recreate the drawing. Ironically, 32 years ago, it literally took me 30 seconds to click the points on the screen and tell the computer to do the revolve, but it probably took me 30 minutes or more to recreate it with modern technology. One of the reasons for this was that my 12-year-old self just eyeballed the points, but my current self had to meticulously measure and plot out each point so that this would be an accurate copy of the original. The other problem I ran into was that the revolve function in Fusion 360 will always produce a smooth revolve following a circular path. So I had to get creative and use the sweep tool a few times to get a one-third segment, which I then copied twice to create the final shape. I then scaled the result down and used the shell tool on the top surface to hollow out the goblet. Unfortunately, this also hollowed out the stem and the base, so I created a reference plane just above the stem 
and use the boundary fill tool to make the bottom half solid again. Lastly, I added some fillets to the rim to make it smooth and then scaled the whole thing down just a bit more. Now all I had to do was export the result as an STL, process it with another piece of software called a slicer, which creates the commands needed to control my 3D printer, and then start the printer. Unfortunately, my 12-year-old self was a little short-sighted and did not design this goblet to be easily 3D printed, so it took quite a lot of support material to deal with this steep overhang, which was super fun, let me tell you. But in the end, I was rewarded with this, a product of my 12-year-old brain that I can now hold in my hand over 30 years later. I firmly believe that this early exposure to the creative use of computers was instrumental in me becoming the person that I am today. So I raise my glass to my old teacher, whoever you are, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me such a great opportunity. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.